Hello, welcome to another one of our live training Tuesdays from Campus HQ. Uh, my name is Dan, and today I'm going to be taking you through a look at multi element head control within Magic Q. Okay, so we're going to be taking a look how we can control multi element fixtures and also fixtures with multiple functions like our Color Strike M here. Um, you'll notice today I haven't actually bothered to plug in my Color Strike M. Uh, the reason for that is I am running our shiny new 1980 software on Magic Q here in front of me and that includes um, custom element sizing and orders for fixtures in Magic Viz. So we've actually got a lovely model in Magic Viz now of our Color Strike M. So instead of blinding the camera with this, because it's very bright, I'm going to use Magic Viz here today. So we'll get straight into it. Um, first of all, I've got a show file here. It's a version of the um, Shove Demo 2024 show file, which is available in Magic Q. It comes in the demos folder when you download the Magic Q software. Um, I've edited this version a little bit to add in some Color Strike M fixtures. So if I go to my patch, um, you can see I've got some Color Strike M's here. I've patched 12 of these in into my show file, ready to go. Once I've fixed, uh, patched these fixtures in, you'll see right off the bat, jumping out a little bit to functions, you'll see it gives us three groups straight away. So I've got a main group for my Color Strike M, and I've got a group for each different function or each different part of the light here. So I've got a group for the plate, which is the uh, the outer LEDs on the Color Strike M, and we've got a group for the beam, which is the the inner tubes, the strobe tubes in the middle there. Um, so just before we take a look at them, just talking about um, basic multi-element control first of all. If I go and grab my Color Strike M group and press locate, you'll see. If I let's just zoom in over to one side of my visualizer, so you can see those a bit more. Um, you can see I have just grabbed every single part of that fixture and located that all together. We want to control bits of those fixtures individually. Um, first of all, one thing to note, um, the reason these aren't pointing straight down at my viz is because I've actually already pre-parked the tilt in advance. Um, so when I located those, they didn't point straight down. That's because I've parked the tilt, nothing's broken there. Um, just so we can easily um, see what's going on there without having to tilt the fixtures each time I locate them. So. We've got our Color Strike M's here, I don't know, we've got all of those on. I'm just going to clear that off. And method one for multi-element head control, which has been in Magic Q for years and years, is using the keypad to select elements. So you can, of course, select heads on the keypad just by typing head numbers, um, hitting at at to select them without intensity, or hit at full to select them with full intensity, or at 50 with 50%, and so on. And we can do exactly the same um, adding elements into the mix as well. So we've got uh, quite a few options there. We can either select the heads first and then dot and then the element numbers, or we can um, just select the elements if we've already selected the heads themselves. So if I select my strike M group here, and if I just type dot to say I'm selecting an element, one at at, so I've selected that with no intensity, and press locate, you'll see, just about see hopefully, um, just element one has come on on each of my fixtures here. So it was just dot one at at to select element one with no intensity and I just located that one. So it's just come on there. And we can also use through and we can use plus and minus to add to our selections as well. So I could, again, I've selected the fixtures already. I could say to dot one through seven at at, locate that. And you'll see I've selected elements for, uh, one through seven, which is um, half of the plate on the strike M. Um, and we can use plus and minus to add and take away to the selections as well. So for example, I could say uh, dot one plus seven at at locate. And if I'd selected the heads first, <laughs> so select the heads first uh, because I didn't add in a head number there. So um, again, I need to select the heads and then do dot to say I'm selecting an element of those heads. One plus seven at at and locate, and you can see I've selected elements one and seven on every head there, and I can use minus again to take away from that selection as well. So plus to add, in, to, add to the selection, minus to take away. <coughs> and we can as well, um, as I mentioned, we could select the head and elements, so I could say head number, whatever the head number is, dot one for element one and so on. Um, but I can also select um, groups as well. If I don't wanna work with head numbers, I just wanna select a group and elements of the group, um, I can see this is group 33 at the top here. So I could say group 33.1 at at and locate that. And you can see again, I've got element one on every fixture 
So that time I didn't select the group first here. I actually selected the group as part of my selection on the keypad um, by typing the group, type, uh, hitting the group number button first and then selecting the group number, dot, and then the element numbers I want to select. So that's selection via the keypad. Um, the other method of selecting uh, elements in Magic Q, if you're a little bit more visual like me, is up the top here, we've got a view elements tab. So if I select my fixtures and go to view elements in the group window, you'll see we get a layout of um, the elements on our fixtures. So we've got all of our plate elements at the top and bottom here, and we've got our beam elements in the middle. Um, this is done in the head file of the fixture. So if you find you have heads where uh, that element layout isn't correct, you can always contact us and we can edit that and send you over some updated head files to correct that element layout in there. So I can just select elements in this window just by tapping on them. I don't need to hold shift in this window, it automatically latches. If I press locate, there you go, you can see I've selected it in that um, almost zigzaggy pattern there on the plate elements or Again, I'll select the heads, go view elements. I could select some of those beam elements. Let's just select a few of those. Press locate again, and there you go. You can just about in my visualizer there, see those beam elements that I've selected. Let's zoom right in to one of my fixtures. There we go. So you can see those beam elements that I've selected there in the order as promised, as you can see there. So you can select elements easily and that view elements tab there as well. And that's selecting elements of fixtures, but fixtures nowadays are getting more and more complicated. Um, and so to combat that a little bit, we've had to add in functions in Magic Q. So as I mentioned at the start here, our strike M here has two completely separate functions on this fixture. So we've got the outside plate at the top and bottom, and we've got the strobe tubes in the middle or beam tubes in the middle there. And we've separated those out into separate functions for easy control. So you quite often wanna control those separately. So when you patch the fixture, as I mentioned at the start, you automatically, assuming you've got auto groups uh, switched on, we've got a main fixture group for everything. We've got a plate group just for our plate function. And we've got a beam group just for our beam function here in the middle. And if I go and take a look at view elements, you can see it automatically selects all of those beam elements only. And again, if I select the plate group, go to view elements, you can see it's automatically selected all of those plate elements there. So functions really simplifies um, control of multi-element or multi-function fixtures in this case within Magic Q, easily giving you those groups of those different functions for control. Um, when you select one of these function groups as well, you'll notice if you go to the beam page, color page and so on, you will only get uh, the attributes which are contained within those functions of the fixture. So it will filter out anything which is in other functions. So you'll easily be able to see what you can control within those functions. Um, so that's multi-element head control and selecting functions as well. Um, one other thing I want to take a look at in this session, uh, moving on a little bit from that, is actually you might often want to go a little bit deeper with control of these fixtures and maybe want to do some simple pixel mapping with them. Um, this is where group grids comes in. So I want to talk a little bit about group grids today as well. So maybe I want uh, an intensity effect, for example, which is wiping across my um, my color strike M's, but at the moment, if I just zoom out in my viz, if I go select, they say, let's just select uh, my whole strike M group. If I go um, add effects, intensity, and let's add a dimmer chase, including the elements, you'll see we're gonna get these running in head order at the moment. So it's gonna go all the way across this truss and then all the way across this truss. What I want to happen um, more in pixel mapping style, is I want to run across the two trusses together. So this is done with grids, uh, group grids. So if I clear that off a minute, go back to layout one. Every group in Magic Q has a group grid. Uh, whether you've looked at it or not, when you've patched the fixtures and you get a group for those, or you record a new group, there is always a grid for that group associated with it. So if I, for example, select all profiles at the top here, I'm just gonna move away from the strike hand for a minute. If I select all profiles, at the top, go view grid. You can see the grid for those profiles there. It's a very basic one. I've just got those fixtures in line. So 
where this actually takes us when I go to view grid is it takes us to the output window, which we can get to by pressing the out button in Magic Queue. And rather than being in view heads or view channels, we're in the view plan tab here. And on the B encoder here, we're filtered to viewing group grids. So we might also sometimes view user grids here, or if we want to create a full pixel mapper, um, or just lay out some fixtures in a user grid. But in this case, we've got this filtered to group grids, and on the A encoder here, you can see which group you're viewing the grid for. And as I said, every group always has a grid associated with it. <clears throat> but there is a little caveat to that. If I go select the strike M group and go view grid, we've got a whole lot more in this grid here, because so it includes all of the elements for those fixtures. And you'll see they're not actually laid out as they are in my rig. Naturally, it is impossible for Magic Queue to know how these fixtures laid out in your grid. So let's put them into the grid, um, into the group grid. But we need to reorganize those before we can start doing things with them. Otherwise, things are going to be in the wrong order. At the moment, you can see the elements laid out. Um, it looks the same as if I was to go to view elements and see the elements here. Um, and the strike ends are currently just stacked on top of each other in this grid. So there's one, there's the other, there's the other, there's the other, and so on. They're just stacked on top of each other. So we need to reorder this grid first. So to do that, I can go set grid size at the top here. And what I'm going to do is I'm gonna make this grid far larger than I actually need it to be in the end. So I'm gonna set it to 100 by 50, 100 slash 50. And you can see I've made that grid very large there. And um, the reason is uh, my strike M's are running horizontally, I've got um, six horizontally here and six horizontally here, so my grid's gonna to need to be quite wide. <clears throat> so what I would do now, um, we've got a couple of options. I could switch on drag move, and I could select some fixtures and start dragging those around. Um, or the way I prefer to do it in this case is actually I'm gonna select all of these. I'm gonna remove them from my grid completely. I'm gonna go back to the group window, go to view heads, and I'm going to select my first six strike M's, which are on my top truss. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Go back to my grid, go insert heads with that top left square selected. Um, I want to include the elements horizontally and go left to right, because that's how they are in my, in my rig. And there we go, we've put in those. And then I could go back to my group window, and select the other six, which are on my lower truss. Select the first square, I want those to start at just underneath. And again, go insert heads, including elements horizontally, and horizontal left to right. <clears throat> and there we go, so we've got my strike hems now laid out in my grid actually as they are on my truss. So I've got six here, six here. Um, I'm left with, left with a massive grid where I've been playing with this. There is a shortcut to cut that down. If I hold shift, I get the option for crop grid at the top here. If I hit crop grid, it automatically crops that grid down to the size that it needs to be for these fixtures that are in it. So you can see my grid here now with my strike M's. Six there, six there. Now, if I go select this group, I'm gonna to go to add group effects. It needs to be a group effect to use the group grid. Go to intensity and add a dimmer chase. Again, including the elements. I want to run across those elements, not just whole fixtures. And you can see that chase running, but at the moment it's doing um, what it was doing before where it um, runs across every head. That is because the group spread is currently set to all channels. Got a few options here. So all channels looks like a standard effect running across heads. Groups will do the whole group together. So in this case, I only had one group selected, so it's just gonna flash those on and off. That's better when you've got multiple groups. Uh, within groups, we'll do, uh, if you've got, say, two groups, um, and you, yeah, that will do head one of group one and head one of group two together, and then head uh, two of group one and head two of group two together, and so on, to keep those in sync. But I'm interested in these grid options here. So we've got grid horizontal and grid vertical. So if I select grid horizontal, you see straight away this is now running across my grid. I'm just going to make that a bit more obvious if I turn cross fade right down. And let's turn the width down a bit as well. There you go. And if I go again, look at my grid, 
You can see that running here. So that is running horizontally across my grid. So that's going to do the two trusses together as they're laid out in my grid there. Um, or I could say, change that to grid vertical. And now, if I look at the output window, that's running vertically down my grid. And I could, maybe I want to turn the width down some more. So that's 12%. And you can see it's now doing each uh, line, if you like, of elements together. So if I look to the output grid again, there we go, that's running vertically down my grid. And you can see that happening in my visualizer there as well. So that's um, group grids in MagicQ, uh, one of the uses of group grids in FX. So you can really quickly set up your group grids and use FX based off of those group grids to have things wiping across your trusses and have some really good effects going there. Um, so we've covered multi-element control, we've covered multi-function, we've talked a bit about group grids. Um, that is the conclusion of today's session. Thanks all for watching. I'm afraid I can't see the comments today, um, but if you do have any comments, any particular questions, if you're on Facebook, please do um, pop us a message and we'll reply to you there. If you're on YouTube, feel free to stick a comment down or email us at support at canvases.co.uk. We'll be happy to answer any of those questions for you. Um, but otherwise, thanks very much for watching and we'll see you next week.